Shalom everyone, and we uh, are reading, uh, learning today, Parashat Vayakel, uh, the book of Exodus, Parashat Shemot, uh, chapter 35, verse 1. Vayakel Moshe et kol adad b'nei Yisrael, vayomer alehem, ele advarim asher siva Adonai lasot otam. And Moses gathered the whole congregation of the children of Israel, and he said to them, these are the things that God ordered to do them. Okay, and he starts with Shabbat. Verse 2, Six days the work will be done. On the seventh day it will be holy. Shabbat Shabbaton Lashem. That's going to be Shabbat for God. Okay, so, but then we continue later on after the Shabbat thing, verse 4. And Moses said to the whole congregation of the children of Israel, and he says, Take from yourself Teruma Ladonai, call a divinity volume of Yah. And from here repeats the whole thing of Parashat Teruma, which is a, we already had Parashat Teruma. However, everything has its own order, and we explained uh, during the last weeks that there is a process, and the process is starting in the beginning of the book of Exodus. We are almost finishing next week. I think uh, we'll be finishing uh, uh, very soon. We're just at the end of it. And what does it mean that we have a process? It looks like we are going through a, a growth pattern that every human being must go through. So this is why we said when we read the book of Exodus that it is a concentrated uh, formula for the spiritual growth of every human being. And, and how, what does it mean? So I'll repeat again the, the uh, part, first parasha of Shmot, Ele Shmot Bnei Yisrael Abayi Mitzrayim. These are the names of the children of Israel coming to Egypt. And Rabbi Chaim Vital explains these are the forces of the soul incarnating into the physical body who is like a bondage and uh, suffocation like Egypt was, the narrow place, okay, the limiting place. This is what Egypt is about. And that's what our body is about. So then we go through the process. We need the plagues without troubles, problems. Nobody really grows not spiritually and not anything else we grow when we go through pain we grow when we find challenges we grow when we overcome issues um, uh, blockages whatever hurdles we have that's when we grow oh we can give up and start dying by giving up and giving up and giving up but it's growth and life is about taking the challenges and moving on. And that's how we grow. These are the plagues. And then coming to Mount Sinai and then having that great uh, revelation of realizing that the, and which is the peak of a person's growth, realizing there are rules, cause and effect. In the beginning, you can find it through personal experience, uh, then through science, and then you realize it's much bigger than that because there is a purpose. It's not random. There is a purpose. You know, Darwinistic evolution, this is childish. You start to realize that there is an evolution. Things are changing. Things are evolving. However, you think it is just by coincidence. Only when you see a bigger picture, you start realizing there's a purpose to the involvement, 
there's a purpose for the evolution, which means there was something in the beginning that already uh, determined the, the whole process of growth. And here it is, and that, that's a very important uh, concept, the concept that if there is a concept, the concept of monotheism, the Abrahamic monotheism, that the world was created for, for a good purpose because the Creator, with all His endless benevolence, He is giving us His endless light. However, we have to go through the process of growth in order to reach those abilities and that potential through evolution, but we have to reach that by ourselves, and there is no endless uh, uh, um, let's say there's no endless uh, uh, choice system that it can go wrong, it can go more wrong, can go horrible wrong, can be great, you know, it's like that's, that's random. No, 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 this is not random. By the end of the process, everything is going to be perfect. This is Abraham. This is the vision of all the, uh, the Tanakh, the Bible, the uh, prophets. It's all about the messianic idea that humanity is evolving towards perfection. Okay? We can't see it around, but if we go backwards 100 years ago, 1,000 years ago, we realize that humanity is evolving towards a better place because no one wants to live 100 years ago, not 1,000 years ago. All of the nonsense about it. It's like people were in a terrible shape in the past and now we are much better off with all the complaints because we have no patience. Why we have so many complaints right now? Because we have expectations. We, are, we want it to be perfect and we can't wait. Why it's not perfect yet? So we blame the government. We blame our teachers. We blame everybody around. It's, and, you know, till we realize we have to take responsibility and be part of the transformation that humanity is going through because, as the Kabbalists explain, the moment the world fell apart in the sin, the sin of Adam, God sh uh, shared the project of fixing everything to subcontractors, which each human being has its own mission. And humanity will come to its completion when each one of the subcontractors, which means me and you and each one of us and them, when everybody does their work, that's when we realize that we, humanity, we did our work. So, and on Mount Sinai, realizing the evolutionary process, realizing that everything has a purpose, and then realizing that we also have a godly power, and that's Parashat Turma in Tetzaveh, to raise physicality and turn it into a into the network of God. And then comes last parasha, Kitisa, with the sin of the golden calf, which is the climax. Why is it the climax? Because in a spiritual journey, you have to understand that the collapse, the mistake, even the mistake that is coming from the worst place of a uh, non-kosher passion, uh, desires, and so on, that's also part of the growth. That's also part of the evolutionary process. And you cannot look at it and say, this is not part of it. This is part of it. It's a must. The result of the golden calf is that we get the, uh, we get the 13 attributes, which is one of the greatest ways for humanity to connect to the highest of all high. So, now that we got it, and we got it as we learn on Mount Sinai, when Moses goes to the mount the second time. This time, the first time he went to the mount, Mount Sinai, on Shavuot, which was the sixth of, uh, of the month of Gemini, Sivan, 
He comes down with the tablets on the 17th of Tammuz. He breaks the tablets on that day, and then he asks for forgiveness for the next few weeks till the new month, the new moon of Elul. On the first day of Elul, the new moon of Elul, uh, Virgo, Moses goes up to the mount for 40 more days. He's coming down with the 13 attributes, with the forgiveness on Yom Kippur, and since then we're celebrating this day of forgiveness, forgiveness of everything. Forgiveness, which means the ability to make mistake and to believe to ourselves that we can get uh, atonement. We can get atonement no matter what we did. The, the, the purpose of the creation is not to punish, but to award, which means you made a mistake, you ask for forgiveness, you make the shuvah, you reconnect again and again and again, and on Yom Kippur you really get another cycle of opportunities. Okay, this is the concept and we receive this most important concept because without that concept we can't imagine real human life because one thing that we humans are doing very well is to make mistakes. We are very good at it and whoever says he does not make mistakes, he or she, they will be lying about other things too. And you can't trust people like this. And you have to understand that making the mistakes is part of who we are because that's how we learn, that's how we grow. That's how we learn to appreciate, that's how we learn to get out of all kinds of bad habits that we're not even aware that there's something wrong with them. Only that is part of who we are and what we do so even the mistakes are part of the system as, as, as the Zohar is teaching us. The whole purpose of the story of humanity is not just to achieve greatness and good, it's also to take the, the negativity and to convert it into opportunities. And that's, and today, in today's modern world, you can see that school of positivity getting larger and larger, either in economics, either in uh, self-growth, self-help, either in modern psychology, in every aspect of our lives, because we're realizing that the fact that things look bad, it's not really bad, it is an opportunity to create greatness and much better out of those bad opportunities. So uh, uh, that is when you think like this, when you train yourself to think like this, this is part of reality which is not just to attain good but also to transform the negative, the darkness, uh, the bitterness into positivity. Okay, so this concept is given to us last parasha, parashat Kitisa, and now parashat Vayakel is being said on the next day after Moses coming down. He came down on Yom Kippur, so this is the 11th of Tishrei, the day after Yom Kippur. So what is, do, is he doing over here? He's teaching us another concept, and the concept is like this. Uh, we have to go to the uh, Zohar for that. And the Zohar on Parashat Vayakel, verse 7, Let's understand what is happening here. Is almost exactly as Parashat Teruma. So if we go Parashat Teruma, uh, the Zohar says 
we go back to Exodus chapter 25, verse 2. Speak to the children of Israel and let them take for me Truma. Truma means uh, to raise a contribution. From every person that his heart will allow him to give. That was in chapter 25, Pasha Tumah. Here, that was the order that Moses is getting on Mount Sinai. However, here, when it comes about what really happened on the ground, when Moses is coming down from the mount and he's gathering the congregation of the children of Israel, and he says, and he says to them, this is in chapter 34, Verse 4, Moses says to the whole congregation of the children of Israel, and verse 5, take from yourself, take from yourself the raising of those contributions, that contribution to God. Okay, so the Zoe is saying it's not the same expression. Why? Because in the beginning, it was from every person. Me'et kol ish. Shekolel hakol. Which means including everyone. Afilu et ha'erev rav. Even the erev rav. And as we said last, last week, when the Israelites are leaving Egypt, that there is a whole uh, big crowd that comes with them. And they wear the warlocks, the sorcerers, the magicians, all the, the people of power of Egypt. The moment they saw Pharaoh losing the battle, and even though they were here on his side, and Moses is coming out of Egypt with huge power, they want to join Moses. And the Zohar says, God says to Moses, do not take him. Not now. Later on, why they had connection to Moses' soul, says the Zohar. They had, there were sparks of souls that were connected to Moses because Moses was a reincarnation of Noah, as we said. And the Israelites were a reincarnation of the people of the flood. The Erev Rav were also part of the people of the flood. However, they did not go through the cleansing of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the iron furnace of Egypt, the hardship, the torture, the uh, abuse, they went, the Israelites went in Egypt that somehow, like the iron furnace, burned the darkness, the negativity, and somehow, Somehow it distilled pure souls that after the Exodus they were ready to get to Mount Sinai and receive the Torah. Now the Erevav had similar souls, however they did not go to that cleansing process. They were loaded with a lot of negativity. And therefore when leaving Egypt and joining the Israelites, they could not be part of the clouds of honor that surrounded the camp. They had to follow and camp after or behind the camp. They felt somehow outcasted. And, you know, it was right. They had, as we see with the golden calf, they are the ones who did the golden calf. They are the ones who basically... Uh, turn the whole process uh, up, upside down. However, when Moses is coming down from the mount, he is saying the mission, the way we thought it is, has changed. We thought, God thought, that okay, we took the Erev outside. However, we, they're already with us if we will be strong enough, powerful enough, 
positive enough, you can always turn negative people into positive. If you just give it enough power, attention, concentration, you can always turn people around. In our case, the mission did not succeed. So now we have to change the course of action. We need plan B. And plan B means that after the Erev Rav showed so much influence on the whole project, now you have to rebuild the whole thing from the beginning. And what you should do, in the beginning, God wanted to contain together to include the shell with the core, the inwards with the outside. The Erev Rav, which were more materialistic and more selfish and more, uh, look, they were the people holding the biggest amount of power in Egypt. And they are now less than the Hebrews who were the slaves in Egypt. So it's hard for them, it's very hard for them to be in such a situation. Okay? And they finally mess it up. They cannot, the pride, it to show us that human pride is so hard to overcome, so impossible to overcome. It is possible, but it looks so big. As sages, sages, our sages are saying, it's like a huge mount that you have to climb. And if you are in the beginning, it looks impossible. And, but you still have to start the climbing. You do your best and God will do the rest. But because the golden calf, you need plan B. And the plan B is to start building the tabernacle, just the Israelites, just the ones of the children of Israel, which means the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that, what it says, Lichlol ben Israel. Verse 8. So each kind went to his own side. The Erev Rav went to the golden calf. The Israelites stayed somehow outside, although they didn't stop it. And they were not assertive, assertive enough to fight against it. And then the Erev Rav made the, the golden calf. And those people from Israel who followed them, died. So God said, from now on, the Mishkan, the building of the tabernacle, real, realistically, should be only by the Israelites. We cannot afford joining the Erev Rav in. So then it says, instead of Moses talking to the whole nation, that's including the Erev Rav, he's gathering only the children of Israel, the, the one who are descendants of Jacob or Israel, the other name. And he says, take the contribution just among yourselves. Velokem ikodem, not like before, met kol from every person, that his heart with allowing to give. Vayakel Moshe, so when Moses, Moses gathers them, Meizah makom ikilotam, from which place did he gather them? Ela mishum shayar evrav haya benem, because the erevrav were amongst them, hayatzach Moshe lakilotam ulechadami benem. Moses had to gather them and separate between the two kinds of people. What's the message for us? Uh, the message is very clear. There's one amazing book. It was written in the beginning of the 1990s by Jim Collins. It's called From Good to Better. And what did he do? He's a researcher in the economy. And he went to the uh, 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 New York stock market
So Jim Collins is going through the records of the New York stock market, as stock exchange, and he's looking for companies that were doing well in the market for quite a long time. I think, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, 15 years. And then suddenly, they're doing not good, they're doing exceptionally good. So there's exponential growth. And he, he found 15 companies like this. And he checked to see what did they do different that as a result, those companies excelled so much in their performance. And he realized there's something in common with all these 15 companies. What they did, the first thing was changing the CEO. The CEO before was the common successful CEO, the charismatic, the one who pushes everybody to perform, to bring their goals, to set goals, to have a vision of numbers, bring the numbers and so on. And therefore the result was that these companies were performing pretty well in the market for a long time relatively. However, the no CEO in these 15 companies, because you know, many times you change CEO and the companies either, you know, go up and down, but usually the performance is the same unless there's a big crisis in the, in the market. Okay, and the, what was in common for all these 15 companies that the new CEO was not the guy, the, you know, the, the big leader, charismatic with the goals. He was somebody that cared about one thing, unity, love, sharing, caring among the company. The, the first, his first clients were the workers of the company. Those CEOs made a new goal. The goal was, first and for all, that within the company, there will be a quality of performance, the quality of interactions, the quality of ideas that will fit very high um, ambitions of uh, humanity, human values. So what they did is little by little, they created a new spirit of the company that the first thing is people supporting each other. And the second thing that we want to do something that will really make a difference in the world together. And little by little, the people who did not want to join the new spirit were simply, you know, left the company. New people were hired that really fit into the new idea. The CEOs were of this kind of, of personality that they did not know that anyone will know their name outside the company. So the real fame was the company. It was the company they were pushing, not their own ego, not their own name. They did not use the company as a tool to enlarge their ego, to enlarge their might. And the company was not their, their vehicle to become bigger and stronger, fame, more famous people, so they can later on become CEOs of bigger, more powerful companies. No, the first thing was to create heavens in their company. And what happened, as the colleagues describe it, they were basically even going against all the rules in the market that first we have to choose a market, first we have to choose a product, First, we have to choose a service that we have an edge in it. Not at all. Not at all. They, their concept was, as he describes it, first, we'll get the right people on the bus. And when we have the right people on the bus, we trust it that together we will know where to travel, where to go to, the direction. So their direction was not so important about choosing the right product or something like this, choosing the right market, 
all of those classes in business school, they didn't, they didn't, make, they didn't affect them at all. First is the quality of our uh, society, our community, which is the company. And then, so little by little, the more people came on the bus, and the more united they were, little by little they found venues and then the production levels, whatever they decided, went up to really uh, exceptional performance. Which means, as we just learned from Parashat Vayakhel, Moses was saying the first thought was that everybody can do it together. But there was the sin of the golden calf. We sunk back into a world of chaos, lies, darkness, bitterness, ups and downs and so on. So we have to realign ourselves towards the new world that is facing us. And in this new world, as Rabbi Ashlag is teaching in his uh, uh, essays, when you create a spiritual community, you must, you must, for the beginning, to take only altruistic and idealistic kind of people. Do not ever try in the beginning to include egotistic people. Why? Because they'll mess up the project. First of all, you have to build up a society, a community, a company, a group of people, that they are there because they want, first and for all, uh, to join under a spiritual goal. This is their goal. This is what they want to do. And because of that, they will support each other's journey in the transformation, the personal transformation of becoming greater people, more positive people. People get closer and closer to the great ideas and values of basically closeness to the Creator. Sharing, caring, uh, responsibility, uh, and drive towards personal transformation. Only later, says Rav Ashlag, only when this community is strong enough and is functional already, only then you can bring in little by little people who are egotistic, which is the majority of the population. Now, when you bring them one by one, not in groups, not by droves, the, na the nature of the case is that when an egotistic person is joining a very cohesive, strong-willed, united community, even though they're coming from a terrible, negative, sour background, the moment they will be around a lot of love and unity and values, the first drive of every human being is the ego. And the ego says, I need to be appreciated, I need to be supported, I need that people would not reject me. And the moment you have a society, a community, uh, in a, you know, it could be a, co a local community, it could be a company, that the values are very high, somebody who comes in and is, is you know, like a lot of people today, unfortunately, he curses every, all the time, he's uh, bad-mouthing all the time, he has no control over his manners and so on. If he's in a, by himself in a community of people with very high, with very high values, they simply look at him as like, excuse me, but we don't do that. And because people's ego is so strong, says Rabbi Ashlag, you don't want to feel inferior. So in the beginning you say, oh, you guys are like really soft people. You don't know this world is tough. But people will say, we don't appreciate it. Sooner or later, even the most egotistic negative, uneducated person will slowly, slowly start to become as them. Why? Everybody 
wants to be part of the community. Nobody likes to be rejected. Nobody likes to be looked at as like, what are you doing over here? You don't belong. Some people would not be able to stand it and they will leave the company or the community. The others will simply mend simply mend their actions and simply become part of the group and and become or adopt the values and the behavior patterns of the community the only way to really improve the world says rabbi Ashlag, is by building small little communities like this and little by little get them bigger and bigger till it expands and the world will simply change. And this is basically what we need personally, which means the value of a community is so much beyond what we can ever imagine. And Rabbi Ashley is spelling it from another point of view. We, nobody can say that, you know, and I said already, whoever says he has no ego anymore, he's no negativity, has no selfishness, will be lying about other things too. Uh, so we all have that. The difference is, are we willing to get rid of it? Are we making a goal of getting rid of it? And the only way we can really get rid of it because the hardest thing in the world is overcoming our own uh, habits or point of view, uh, the way we perceive ourselves, all that negativity, we are too weak for doing it alone. We need help from others. And therefore, when we join in a community that has those great values, the community has the power to raise the individual to higher places. So the biggest and the most important choice of a human being is to choose their community, to choose who do we uh, consider to be a re reference group. If you're a business person, if you're a family person, if you're a community person, it doesn't matter. You have to understand that the strongest tool for spiritual growth is being part of a community that pulls you upwards. Our sages are teaching that you should be better be the tail for the lions than being the head of the foxes. If you are the head of the foxes, which means you lead people that are inferior to you, how far up can you go? You can't go that much higher. But if you are the tail to the lions, you'll always naturally have the drive to climb up all the way up to the head. And you know what? Even the lion's tail is still a lion and not a fox. Okay, so when we want to go on a journey of spiritual growth, and this is what Parashat Vayakel is about, it's not enough just to have the right ideas. It's not enough to have the Torah and the study of the Zohar. It's more important who are the people that we do the journey with. And if those people do not push us upwards and they're busy with, you know, maybe they talk about certain higher values, but they don't behave according to these values, they're not your community. You, you should even, the Zohar says, if if they're busy always with what is called bad-mouthing politics and so on, it's like you should simply stay away because when they fall, you won't be there. You want to choose people. And today we're talking about, I'm not talking about a country which follows the same rules, but that's not, you know, we are individuals and we, that's not a mission right now to change our country. First, we have to change ourselves. And how do I change myself? If we look at the great Kabbalists of Tzfat, or the Kabbalists that wrote the Zohar, they always had 
a small tiny community with them why without that tiny community you're never going to make it how big was that community three people because three is a crowd is the minimum how much can it grow four five six seven maybe up to ten no more than that why you can get lost a small community like this can be the nucleus of a bigger com community first of all but first of all you need to be a part of very few people that they brainstorm study together take care of each other support each other and commit to work together how do I create a community like this that's not that hard because we learn in the ethics of the fathers chapter one he says make yourself a rabbi a teacher and purchase yourself a friend making a rabbi there are many teachers you can choose to be your role models your teachers whatever there's so many teachers that that's easy but having a real friend a friend that will push us towards higher levels of spiritual growth that you know that's a lot of energy you have to pay for that and how do you pay for that you have to make an effort we know very well that creating a community is an action of a lot of effort so how do you start a community so here we start with Shabbat the first thing is six days you do your work as you work during the six days you don't have so much time for community unless you chose a company or to build a company that has those people with the vision according to that book of Jim Collins uh, from good to, to, uh, to better okay so then you can create your company as your support group okay your uh, uh, training group but let's say you you could make it so you start with something Shabbat is for that on Shabbat we're not supposed to work we're not supposed to run around doing errands and shoppings and stuff like this Shabbat we're staying home so what do you do on Shabbat you build a community how do you build a community uh, either you join Shabbat dinner Shabbat prayers or you invite people and you create a Shabbat dinner and the Shabbat prayers or whatever you can and you invite people and if, if some people you see that do not join you and are not on the same page of spiritual growth don't invite them again and the people that do share with you the ideas of growing and supporting each other and they you can keep inviting them till you purchase you simply buy yourself their friendship so when you create that community with few people you already created the community and that community maybe can build other communities and join some others till we create something bigger okay but in order for a person to grow Rabbi Eichlach is teaching in his article for the completion of the Zohar says that two major points of bringing the world towards the Tikkun the final Tikkun one is the Zohar itself learning the Zohar connecting to the energy of the Zohar understanding the values of the Zohar applying those values in everyday life however this is not enough this is a must it's a necessity it's a great gift it's a great revelation in our generation however that is not enough because if you don't have the people to share those ideas with if you don't have the people to build your life according to these ideas with to lift yourself up from your own uh, limitations it's impossible because the the prisoner cannot lift himself up from the prison you the prisoner which is each one of us needs helpers to lift him up from his own prison 
who are those participants who are those partners these are your friends this is the community you want to build so when you get together and you learn together and you start to support each other and to push each other then you can create enough push enough drive enough force to lift once one of the members another time one another person of the members till together with so much power you can lift all the group up and up and up on the ladder of the spiritual growth therefore this issue of vayakel gathering creating community this is uh, the the main the first tool that moses is giving the israelites the next day he comes down from the mount the community vayakel moshe and he brought them together he gathered them together as a community and now what's the first way shabbat the other way here it is building the tabernacle when you build together you know you could have a few few people and you have a goal building a synagogue building a spiritual center building a non-profit that will help those kind of people or other kind of people now you need to have a common goal a project and rabbi ashlock says every person must have yes you need to make a living this is a necessity that nobody can condemn okay but you need to have something bigger than that something that will make the world better and move the world farther upper up the scale and that is by having a common project how do you unite people unite them around a project and here's the project the project is building the tabernacle that project created a nation out of the Israelite and the rule was keep the Erev out when we're ready we'll bring them in but meanwhile we need to learn how to work as a community they didn't work as a community at that moment they were ready to do that otherwise Mount Sinai won't, won't be a revelation okay uh, they made the effort to become like this but really to make it happen when did it really happen as they built the tabernacle and now we can see all of these things there were the people preparing that and there were pre people preparing other things there are people who worked with the gold and the silver some people worked with the copper and all the textiles they were using and the skins and all the leather each one of them needed other uh, skills of other people and it, there's a whole list again like in Parsha Tuma but that list is to show you have a list of projects and you get the friendship to create those projects and lift them up without forgetting that the project is like your flag that everybody can gather around the flag but the values are the values of spiritual growth supporting each other making each other better and by this making tikkun olam making the whole world better so that's the basic idea of parashat vayakel which is the message for all of us from the day moses comes down to from mount sinai all the way till the coming of the messiah hopefully very soon in our days and it's all about these two things studying spirituality studying the, the, the Torah with the spiritual aspect with the Zohar and at the same time creating a community you start when you know three is a crowd you start with three maybe if you can make it bigger make it bigger to more than three and then start to build more small communities like this till you have more and more people working together in improving themselves and getting closer to the light and finally that will cover the whole of humanity 
Thank you so much and a lot of success to all of us. It's a big job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew.